and good afternoon all. Uh, thanks for rejoining my talk. I've seen lots of faces from the previous one. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about um, uh, QGIS in WebAssembly. Um, I'm from Lutra Consulting, a QGIS developer company, and also we have a product around uh, QGIS for mobile app. But uh, directly diving into uh, the subject, can I run QGIS as a web app? Um, the answer is not really. It's an app for desktop. And uh, it would be good to have a web app uh, because then you don't need to install it. You don't need to deal with your IT. And uh, it's uh, easier and faster to upgrade. And uh, you also don't need to deal with lots of uh, rollout and uh, um, of security updates, etc. Uh, there are several ways of doing it. Um, one uh, that has been around for a while is uh, QGIS server and uh, uh, JavaScript. So what you do is uh, you prepare your QGIS uh, project in desktop, probably using a geodatabase like PostGIS, style the data, create labels, all the cartographic things you want to do with it. And then um, uh, you serve it like an image of the map you see on your desktop as a web service. Uh, to your um, browser um, using some open layers, leaflet, and JavaScript stuff. You can uh, use the image of the map that you have created on the web. And there will be QGIS servers sitting there creating those uh, images, and there will be lots of complexities for caching data, updating data. If you change symbology and you have a large cache, you need to redo it. Uh, rerun the caching. Also, uh, there will be lots of limitations. You, you just see the image. You can't do anything with it. Maybe some uh, identification legend, and that's it. Uh, there, if you ever dream to edit the data, it becomes a nightmare. Uh, so it's just a screenshot of your QGIS in the browser, web browser. Another option you have is uh, run QGIS as a, within a virtual machine within the web browser. So there are some uh, services where you uh, uh, log in, register, sign up, whatever it is, and then it gives you a virtual machine. When you launch that virtual machine, it full screen opens QGIS with uh, all its toolbars and uh, map canvas, and you can have uh, access to that uh, QGIS session. Uh, the issue with that, it's uh, uh, really uh, resource limited. So if you are working on a shared virtual machine with hundreds or thousands of users, you will end up with uh, very laggy maps to render or uh, navigate. Uh, so that's uh, the virtual one. There are some companies actually offer this service. Uh, at least you don't need to install it. And the uh, other option is uh, rewrite all C++ code uh, in uh, JavaScript. It's uh, over one million line of C++ code in QGIS. And it, uh, according to GitHub, is 312 years of developer's person to write it. OK? so. Uh, we just need to wait. Also, QGIS core developers are not very keen on JavaScript, so that's not going to happen. And uh, uh, there is a new fancy technology which is called WebAssembly. What WebAssembly does, it uh, takes your existing code in C++, Rust, or C, and then uh, you run it. It creates some executables that you can run in your browser. It's multi-platform, so as long as you run any of the recent web browsers from recent years, and uh, uh, it's supported in probably all web browsers in Edge, 
Firefox and uh, Safari Chrome. Uh, it's quite fast, about uh, uh, probably 50%, uh, 45% uh, as uh, fast as the native app. So if it takes uh, 10 seconds to render a map on your QGIS map, with this one, you can get to 15 seconds. So it's not that much of a difference, but it's your data. And uh, also, it's a sandbox. So you have uh, uh, full security. You don't need to worry about the updates, upgrades. Uh, it has got very limited access to any of the or, um, uh, operating system APIs unless you uh, declare it uh, clearly in the uh, functions you write for your uh, uh, application. So uh, the way it works, as I said, you get your uh, uh, C++ code or Rust or C, and then run it through some compiler. It creates those uh, WASM binaries, uh, uh, and then you use that within your JavaScript application uh, through some functions and you interact through uh, that with your, uh, from your browser with that uh, code. So if you think of JavaScript, it's essentially when you go and visit a website, it's uh, download, then parse, then execute. And this WASM is a part of the download. Once it's downloaded locally, your application, then you have got some uh, functions to talk to your uh, applications and run certain commands. Uh, uh, examples of web assemblies, uh, open source ones, are uh, FFmpeg, uh, which is good for creating and converting and encoding videos and audios. You can now access it directly through uh, 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 WASM file, and SQLite is the same uh, for image processing photon. And then uh, you have also got Google Earth. The, recently, they have stopped developing the app, so you can directly uh, access it from your uh, web browser. It's essentially a web assembly application. Uh, you have got AutoCAD and Adobe, uh, which uh, is interesting because it's kind of related to QGIS. Adobe is for raster and AutoCAD for vectors, so they have um, ported those applications to uh, WebAssembly, and you can mm, easily, uh, with some modified interface, you can use those uh, applications from the web without any installation. Um, because I know they had some issues with other uh, uh, platforms like Linux or uh, Mac, but through this way, they skip creating new uh, packages. Then uh, you have Figma and uh, SketchUp and Wim. I have written a note to do a demo of Wim, but I don't know how to exit it. I don't know the shortcut, so I, I skip that. But you can do editing uh, of your data directly through this uh, WebAssembly application. So. Uh, QGIS WebAssembly or uh, QGIS JavaScript, uh, it's uh, a port of uh, QGIS core uh, to WebAssembly. I do the demo first. Oops. I see if I can grab this and move it here. Yeah. So if you go to this website, you have got uh, a bunch of projects already prepared. If I press F12. and uh, refresh this, uh, you can see it downloads a bunch of uh, uh, QGIS uh, JavaScript library, the QGIS WASM binary I mentioned, and also all the data was better than shapefile. You have got all the buildings and uh, geotiffs uh, and the QGIS file. So essentially, you are now viewing this data directly locally. You can go offline, and your browser is rendering the data. Uh, you can zoom in. Uh, I 
change. I can't see any other map, but there should be others. There are different background map. It's strange. Okay, so this is uh, an example uh, prepared, but we have allowed uh, uh, QGIS uh, I also you can load your own data. Uh, I have got this QGIS project set up here. Mm. Uh, so it's a bunch of geo package files uh, and uh, a TIFF file. And let's say I want to upload this and render it directly in the map. So if I go to um, uh, here and add my local project, uh, same files. It's uploading it, uh, not uploading, but reading the files now. I have uh, been very ambitious because I put a lot of data inside. Okay. So you can see it directly renders the data without any map services behind. This is all uh, the map you see in QGIS Canvas. Uh, the labeling, the rendering effect, this hill shade effect, all of those are properly parsed through the uh, engine and it displays it. Let's make like another minor change. If I turn on the contour lines and save the project and try to read it again from the same project, you will be able to see the, oops. Uh, add local files. I think it cached it. I need to clear the cache and reload it. But you get the idea. So for mm, uh, these kind of projects, you don't need any server, any complex setup to serve your data. Uh, I'll go back to the presentation. Um, the history of QGIS WebAssembly, it was started with, by my colleague Martin in 2022 as a prototype. And then uh, uh, Michael, uh, who has been working on OSG, OSG Earth uh, WebAssembly, also joined. We got some funding from ETH uh, Zurich, and uh, it was further refined. And by uh, late last year, it uh, we managed to merge it as a part of main QGIS project, so it's now available on, in QGIS uh, main repository on GitHub. Uh, the possibilities and why QGIS uh, uh, WebAssembly, uh, the first one is, uh, as I said, no installation. You just uh, package your binary file that uh, WASM file with your uh, uh, project, and it handles all the reading and rendering the data. It's multi-platform. You don't need to mess around with uh, uh, Mac OS, iOS, Linux, Android. So once you create your map, you can essentially push it for any of those platforms. Uh, Serving maps with no cost, uh, you offload the rendering of the map, uh, which is the costly part, to the client. So you can essentially zip your shapefile, your QGIS project, with uh, this QGIS WASM file and send it to uh, your users. So their mobile, their desktop, laptop will be responsible for rendering, and the rendering cost, which is uh, processing, uh, it's not your cost. It will be the um, 
users, the clients. Uh, it will be good for onboarding new QGIS users. I don't know how many of you have been doing QGIS training, but uh, probably half a day of your training goes around installing QGIS. But if you have uh, something like this, you can easily uh, demo the capabilities and its QGIS feature. Um, with the emergence of uh, cloud-optimized formats, uh, it's very uh, handy because you can essentially create an application which points to a cloud-optimized format and then just display everything without any cost. You don't need to render anything, you don't need to process anything, so you just uh, uh, serve data and it's a storage plus uh, uh, internet bandwidth. Uh, simplify collaborations. If you work with Google, something, uh, a complex map, you want multiple people to work. Uh, as I said, something like WFST is uh, probably not a nightmare, but it's very difficult to set up. Uh, but with something like this, you can essentially set up a project and have it uh, like Figma or Google Docs and uh, use it uh, in this way. And the other one, why? Why not? It's a, it's a new technology, Adobe, Autodesk, others are doing it, and we have got an open source community, so why not we try it? A bit uh, background about uh, the uh, architects of uh, the system. You have got uh, C++ code, uh, which is QGIS core. In addition, you have uh, Qt, GDAL, Proj, and uh, other dependencies like protobuf, sqlite, um, and uh, these are existing uh, libraries. In addition, uh, the QGIS was um, as a part of that, we developed the QGIS uh, JavaScript C++ code, so it wraps around the QGIS functionalities in a uh, C++ code, then you can expose it to JavaScript but it goes through uh, uh, cross-compilation and it creates this uh, JavaScript libraries with some open layers stuff. Uh, then it creates a node package uh, manager so you can download this and you can access to those functions. And currently, uh, the formats we support is the normal GDAL and uh, uh, OGR formats, uh, file formats. Uh, all the labeling and uh, symbology, as you saw, it works. Um, the rendering effects work as well. Um, the bits that not work uh, in, at the moment is not working, but we are working on it, and it should be done soon. It, we got funding for it. It's uh, access to uh, remote uh, resources uh, and uh, some other proxying to be able to use, as I said, the remote one. The uh, bit that it's a bit open for discussion is the licensing. It's a new model of software. So you package your executable uh, with web browsing and you might inter interface with some closed source. So uh, it's, uh, if uh, QGIS is GPL, and I leave it for lawyers and pedantics to discuss this <laughs> and come up with the solution for the license. Mm, uh, yeah, the, uh, there are some uh, functionalities we would like to add to uh, and the QGIS uh, um, web assembly at the moment, as you saw, it was just zooming and panning, uh, but things like identification, uh, getting legend, uh, some other uh, things you use on QGIS, it will be good to have. It's only based on uh, QGIS core, so we don't have QGIS uh, analysis, QGIS uh, Python, PyQGIS, or QGIS 3D, so these are all possible in future. And once we have got those, we can probably have some uh, start building, and not the QGIS 3D and PyQGIS, but the identify feature, get legend, and more functions, you can replace potentially your web map uh, through QGIS server and just use the app directly in your browser. Cool, and these are the links, the demo I've shown you. You can try it yourself. 
there is the uh, GitHub repo and uh, NPM packages where you can download and play around with it. <coughs> 